Hey, the 2022 recession is on its way. Here's how you need to protect yourself. So first of all, full disclosure, it's not a certain thing. It's not 100%. Anybody who tells you that, hey, I know for certain it's going to happen. The fact of the matter is the biggest brains, the best and brightest economists, nobody really knows. The government doesn't really know what's going to happen because all of this is fueled by the dynamics of human behavior. And no one really controls human behavior. We human beings tend to be the guiding force behind every single marketplace. Because of this uncertainty, that's what causes even more. Now, if you look at the stock market and what's going on, let's separate two things, the economy and the stock market. They're completely two different things, but they're tied in together, right? The economy is always rear facing, right? It's a lagging indicator. It's like looking in the rear view, right? You can see that big truck coming and you're at a stoplight and you can see it barreling forward and you estimate that it's going to hit you. And when it hits you, it's going to hurt. That's the economy. Rear view looking, rear view facing, rear view thinking lagging indicators like joblessness hit by the pandemic eventually it's going to show up while the stock market is more of a forward thinking right they're basing it on future right think of this before a tech company even makes profit right i was looking at a real estate company a real estate firm and it has hundreds and millions of dollars of losses but it's valued at billions it, it makes completely no sense sometimes, right? A company can burn millions of dollars and its CEOs can make tons of money and the company has yet to turn a single dollar. That's why you have crazy valuations like Airbnb, which actually have no real estate, but are worth more than Hilton, Marriott, and Hyatt combined. Now think about that. They're hugely valued at billions of dollars and didn't turn a profit for a long time. Same thing with Uber, same thing with a lot of different companies, right? So it's future-minded. And if you think of Amazon, Amazon lost money for years and years and years before it turned a profit because investors saw the future, right? We just had some crazy valuations this particular year. We just had some crazy activity in the stock market. Matter of fact, I think it's 230 some billion dollar loss at Facebook, AKA Meta. That's a lot that Zuckerberg is missing from his bank account. Now I'll take the missing part, keep that, right? But if you think about it, you know, companies like Shopify, companies like Snapchat, like decimated, while companies like Amazon went up greatly. So if you're looking at that, there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. That's a great sign that there's volatility and people aren't really sure which way it's gonna go. So when you're looking at this volatility, you also have to look at bubbles. And I would say that 2021 was a year of just bubbles, like tech valuations and all of these kind of things, Bitcoin, all of these bubbles, housing, all of these things are just forming this big, huge bubble. And inflation is that little pin that's gonna burst that bubble. Speculation doesn't exist when inflation rises. It's the catch-all cure-all for a lot of things in the marketplace. And unfortunately, we know that it's rising more and more, 7% or above 7%. And the consumer price index has risen more than 5% already. So you can see that things are continuing to pile up and rise. Here's an interesting factoid, right? Since World War II, we've never gone above 5% inflation and not gone into a recession. If you look at this graph by Fred, you'll see that it it's on paper and numbers don't lie. So all things are considered, we're likely headed down that road. So like I was mentioning, 1951, there was a Korean war. So obviously war creates some amount of um, gross domestic product and keeps the machine going. So that was the only time we peaked up above 5% and didn't go into recession. And then there were a few times, and obviously we know there were $30 trillion in increasing. So if the feds, for example, were to raise the interest interest rate too high or too low, it can have huge impact. Now, the government has in the past, at least for a little bit, defeated inflation here and there. So under President Carter in the 1980s, um, we were able to combat it, although it was a, a losing war for a few years and then stabilize the economy back up. But guess what they did? They pushed that interest rates way high. Like I remember um, when my mom uh, bought a house in the 80s, uh, it was 14, 15 and beyond interest rate. And think about what that would do to the housing
housing market right now just to control inflation. Because of all these things, lagging indicators and the stock market are kind of showing that and history is kind of showing that as well. Now let's look at the supply chain. Obviously, we're just not even out of the pandemic, so to speak, but we've got supply chain issues. We've got China producing goods and those goods can't reach the United States. We've got um, a labor crunch going on where, you know, mass exodus of people. All of those kind of things are, again, economic lagging indicators showing that these things, I'm not saying that we're going to slide into a depression, but it definitely is going to have at least some temporary, if not permanent adjustments to make in our lifestyle. And so you might ask, how does that relate to investing? The government will probably likely buy more bonds or whatever. And the government always, when I say government, the feds always want to keep the inflation down to around 2%. Whether that's possible with right now with everything that has happened or not, I don't know. And I could just about bet you they don't know as well. And so because of all these things, what do you do with your money? So kind of a little extra on this video, I'm going to give you, you know, points to kind of hedge against inflation and protect yourself. And the number one thing is real estate. Majority of my investments, like I was telling you in 2008, revolved. My whole life was about real estate, real estate, real estate. I didn't start to start to invest in stocks and companies and businesses till well, way later. But real estate is an amazing investment in times where inflation is there. Now, keep in mind, they could push the interest rate back up to where my mom paid, you know, 14, 15%. And then it may not be such a great investment. But for right now, we're lucky to have a fixed interest rate that's very low. Heck, we're lucky to have a fixed interest rate because there are a lot of countries that have variable interest rates. And so having a fixed interest rate, if you buy a, a house and inflation is still there and you continue at the same path you're in, that inflation is going up. And so the price of your house is rising at the same exact time, right? And your debt stays the same. So you, let's say, you know, you your house goes up 10% in every year. As long as the interest rates stay the same and you're on a fixed interest rate and your income is rising, think about that. You've got a great insulation against inflation itself. Now, you could do the math and figure out what your wages are going to be, but we never really know. It depends on how much your company is going to give you a raise going on upward. Let's say if it's the cost of living increase of two or three percent a year. Well, probably likely, even if your local real estate market takes a little dive, if you're going to stay in that investment for 20 to 30 years, you're still going to come out on top. So real estate is a great hedge against inflation. The other thing would be any debt that actually gives you more. If it's not real estate, maybe it's very focused investments in businesses that you know of. So maybe you're going to start a particular business. That kind of debt is okay and could hedge you from inflation if your profit rises and if you're in an industry that's going to be increasing like your renewable energy sources or you know, solar powered, your electric, all of those kind of things. Maybe there are some businesses out there you can actively invest in or be a part of that's going to hedge you from inflation coming up. And last but there are a few items that, you know, a Rolex, a particular watch, they don't really necessarily lose value. If anything, I've sold watches and some type of exotic cars for more than what I purchased them for. So there are things you have to kind of do your research, but there are ways to hedge yourself from inflation. Sometimes the compounding effect of being in debt and having inflation is a double whammy because you're paying interest rates and then the cost of living continues to go up. So if you want advice on how to get out of debt, go ahead and click this next video.